Hello, today we'll be talking about multi-dimensional scaling, the dimensionality reduction method designed to preserve distances. We will also be talking about underlying concepts of distances and inner products. Recall the PCA optimization. This was intended to seek new axes where the data could be projected to, to maximize the variance preserved. The variance is not necessarily the sole quantity that we want to preserve in data. Sometimes we might want to preserve distances or proximities between data points. For example, you can imagine that preserving distances preserves separations between data clusters. One motivation for doing this is because the data might come from such a high dimensional space that seeing the structure of the data can be difficult unless you replicated these same distances in a lower dimensional space. The second set of motivations could be that we actually don't have any kind of space in which the data lies at all. The data points don't have coordinates and they came as a set of dissimilarities or proximities. Now this can be the case when you have any kind of network data where you have who's connected to who but you might not have native feature dimensions. So the task of MDS here would be to find axes where the points actually have those distances. Um, in other examples, you, it might be easier to compute distances than to understand the native space where the data lives in. An example of this is in the gut microbiota field. Here, the microbiome or the bacterial population within organs like guts of organisms are measured and sequenced. So once they're sequenced, we can figure out which species of bacteria um, are in a particular gut and how much of each species there is. But in order to find out how different two di our organisms are, there is a very complicated earth movers distance that's measured called unifrac, which is transport cost along a phylogenetic tree. But once you have these distances that are computed, you can actually embed these individuals using MDS in a way where on the MDS plot, these distances are the same as the unifract distances. And then you can analyze it similar to a PCA plot. You can look for separations, differences between known populations, and what is forming these axes. Now that we have an idea of why we would want to do this, let's define distances more carefully. A distance or a metric function is symmetric, non-negative, and follows the triangle inequality. Triangle inequality simply says that these two sides have to be greater than or equal to the third side, otherwise they sort of couldn't reach it. Inner products are sort of a related notion, and these define similarity of two vectors of high dimensional space by means of the dot product operation. Recall that the covariance was a dot product between centered feature vectors. Inner products ha, are usually denoted with these angle brackets, and they too are symmetric, they're positive definite, and they're linear. Here I've shown linearity in the first term, but by symmetry they're also linear in the second term. Inner products are very interesting because they can actually induce distances by way of something called a norm. A norm is the inner product of a vector with itself and usually the magnitude of that. So one example of a norm is an LP norm where the LP norm is usually applied to these difference vectors and we're deriving some notion of the magnitude of this difference vector uh, and this in turn gives us the difference between or distance between these two vectors. And it's defined um, in here using a powering to the p over every dimension of the vector and then a p through. The most common inner product is the Euclidean dot product, which is just x transpose y, which is the dot product you're used to. This component y multiplies the entries and sums them up. The Euclidean dot product induces the Euclidean distance. When you take 
the dot product of a difference vector of itself. Euclidean distances are induced by Euclidean dot products and you would take these difference vector components, square them, and their square root. Here's an example actually of an L1 distance called the Manhattan distance. Here there's no squaring or square rooting. These are just straight component wise differences that are summed up. Of course, how far two points are from each other is entirely dependent on what kind of distance you choose, which is what makes this choice very important. Once you have distances, you can define a distance matrix. This matrix has zeros along the diagonal and it has dimensions n by n if there are n data points. The reason there are zeros along the diagonal is because everything is exactly similar to itself and off diagonal you have different distances and it's still symmetric. Once you have this matrix, you can define what multidimensional scaling is. Multidimensional scaling finds new projections of data or coordinates for data points such that a quantity called stress is minimized. This means that in these new coordinate representations, the Euclidean distance is similar to the distance in the given distance matrix. And remember, that could be the only thing that was given was the distance matrix. Normally, this is solved using greedy optimization methods, such as iterative steepest descent, or a variant called stress majorization. There is a particular case where there is an analytic solution. If we know that our original distance matrix contains pairwise Euclidean distances, this means that we could actually use the Euclidean dot product instead. And that's starting to sound something like PCA, but I'm going to make that connection sharper. First off, preserving Euclidean dot products would automatically preserve Euclidean distances. This means that we could reformulate this problem as trying to preserve an inner product, which we saw can be done using SVD, like in PCA. So there would be no need for the steepest des descent algorithms. So in order to do that, we reformulate this criteria from stress to a quantity called strain. The strain quantity is just measuring the difference between given inner products and the inner products of your new data coordinates. And here, this relies on the fact that we have these inner products from the original data or coordinate space. But what if we don't have that? What if we only had the distance matrices? It turns out that using some clever trigonometry and algebra, we can actually derive the dot product matrix from the distance matrix. And that's by way of what's called the centering operation. Here we have these centering matrices multiplying the squared distance matrix on either side, where IN is an identity matrix and JN is a matrix of all ones in N dimensions. If we do this, it turns out that we, it will result in the dot product uh, matrix instead, then we can use, of course, SVD to solve this. When you solve this with SVD, you get new projections or coordinates, y as u times s, and this actually gives the exact same embedding as PCA. But note that this will only work when Euclidean distances are chosen. So how is this useful? First, we know that PCA is actually a fast way to preserve Euclidean distances as well. But second, if we have other distances, like the unifract distance, and one distance that we'll be talking about a lot is manifold distances, then we can derive interesting embeddings that show the underlying structure of the data given these newer notions of distance. And one example is the dimensionality reduction method from our lab called FATE. Um, you can see here, FATE applied to a differentiation system. Human embryonic stem cells allowed to differentiate for up to 27 days. So one cell type giving rise to many others. You see PCA gives you a very blobby picture of this, whereas um, FATE, which actually uses MDS after computing a manifold distance on this data, actually preserved this, the branching structure pretty well. So uh, MDS will preserve whatever notion of distance you give it, and this can be one of the true advantages of MDS.